So, when we meet a number, how can we tell if it's rational or irrational? Recognizing a rational number is quite easy. The integers are rational numbers, since an integer n can be written as n over 1. A fraction, since, well, obviously a fraction is already written as a fraction. A terminating decimal, so a decimal that eventually stops, that's going to be a decimal fraction. Or a repeating decimal. We saw that in the previous video. Add to that family the square roots of perfect squares. Whole number perfect squares, so numbers that when we take the square root we get a whole number. What about perfect square fractions? If I take, say, three-fifths and square it, that'll be three-fifths times three-fifths is nine-twenty-fifths. So the square root of nine-twenty-fifths is three-fifths. In general, we can recognize a perfect square fraction if its numerator and denominator are already perfect squares, or it can be simplified to make it so that its numerator and denominator are perfect squares. For example, if we wanted to take the square root of 32 over 50, notice the numerator and denominator have a common factor of 2. So, canceling out the common 2, we get the square root of 16 over 25. Numerator and denominator are perfect squares. I do square root to each. That's 4 fifths, because 4 fifths squared will be 4 times 4 over 5 times 5 is 16 twenty fifths. Okay, so all of these numbers are rational. What irrational numbers do we know about so far? Any decimal that doesn't repeat or terminate is irrational. How do we know that? Because if we take any fraction and make it into a decimal, it either repeats or terminates. So for example, if I take the decimal 0.1, two zeros, two ones, three zeros, three ones, four zeros, four ones, and just continue that pattern, getting more and more zeros, then more and more ones, that number is irrational. Why? Because it doesn't repeat. Right? The pattern never repeats itself. It just keeps getting longer and longer and it doesn't terminate, it never stops. The other irrational numbers we have available to us are square roots of numbers that are not perfect squares. So for example, the square root of 3, or the square root of 1 -seventh. Not perfect squares. Therefore, the square roots are irrational. There's one other very famous irrational number that bears mentioning here, the number pi, which is a number that we meet in geometry. It's the ratio of the circumference of a circle, so the distance all the way around the outside, to, the, to its diameter, the distance across. This number pi is irrational. We often have some decimals or fractions that we use to approximate pi, but those are just approximations. They're not exact. If we go to the calculator and enter square root of 3, for example, it gives us some decimal. That is a rounded decimal. How do we write that out? We could write the square root of 3 exactly equals 
zero. I'm going to leave off that last digit because I don't know if it's rounded up or not. And then I'm going to write three dots. This is a punctuation mark, these three dots. This is an ellipsis. English writing, it means that we're leaving out a bit of a quote or something's trailing off. Here it means, and so on. There's more digits after that. I'm not telling you what they are. They just keep going. Without the three dots, we can't write the exactly equals. We could, however, write, for example, square root of 3 is approximately equal to 1.732. This means the number that I'm about to write is rounded. Square root of 3 is not exactly 1.732. If I take 1.732 to the second power, I don't get exactly 3. I get about 3. I can say that the square root of 3 is about 1.732 because 1.732 squared is about 3. But 1.732 is a rational number. It's not exactly the square root of 3. So be aware when you're rounding an irrational number that you are rounding. You're not giving the exact square root of 3. Even this long decimal that the calculator gives me, 1.732050808, if I square that, the calculator doesn't even give me exactly 3. This number is very, very, very close to 3. This decimal is very, very, very close to the square root of 3, but it's not exactly the square root of 3.